Perfect. All right. Thanks for joining. My name is Stephen Vaudinger, uh, AKA Stevie Coaster. I am the support manager for Chocolatey Software, and we are going to talk about PowerShell Crescendo for the next about 45 minutes. I have an agenda. I have no earthly idea what it is because I found out about this talk about two hours ago. Um, so we'll figure it out. Um, so we're going to wing it. I'm going to show you what Crescendo is, what it's all about, how you can use it. Um, I think it's really freaking cool, um, and I see a lot of value in it. So hopefully, at the end of this, uh, you'll see the same thing and have some ideas on how you can use it and ask lots of questions because that'll fill up time. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and get rid of slides because I hate slides. Awesome. Um, so where do we want to start? We'll start with this open SSL example here. Um, and actually, let's start at the docs. So if you search for Microsoft PowerShell Crescendo, you'll land on the documentation. Uh, pretty good overview. And there's a couple of commandlets that you can run to kind of help you out. Um, I will say that the commandlets are, are nice. But if you use the schema directly in VS Code, um, you'll get a lot more out of it. The schema is great. It holds your hand the whole way through. You get IntelliSense. It tells you what types you need, whether you've got errors, et cetera, et cetera. The commandlets are great. They will generate the JSON for you, but not quite all of the JSON that makes it awesome. So kind of pick your poison. I'm of the mind that if you understand the schema and you're not scared of JSON, just write the JSON. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, developers on your team that don't write PowerShell, but they're used to writing build pipelines and CI CD tools and things like that. They're used to YAML, JSON, all that stuff. This is a really good way to get them producing PowerShell modules for the tools that they're building. So you've got a, an engineering team in your organization. They build a .NET CLI app that you guys use internally, but you want to use PowerShell to interact with that CLI. That's perfectly fine. That's great. That's how you should do it. But a lot of those teams, they write great C Sharp, but they don't know how to write PowerShell. Or they're not as good at writing PowerShell as they are at C, as C Sharp. This is where Crescendo fills that gap. By filling out this JSON schema file, giving it the native command that you're going to wrap, the arguments that you want to pass to that native command, you're able to generate a PowerShell module at the end of that that you can then take and give to your end users, your other engineers, your other teams to be able to interact with that CLI in a very PowerShell-y way. Um, you know, most of the time a CLI app will export or return string data, right? That's cool, but PowerShell's object-based. And once you have an object, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. You can filter it. You can send it to other places. You can convert it to whatever format you want. That's really, really powerful and really extends the usefulness of that CLI application. So in the case of the examples that I've got going on today, um, let's take a look at VS Code. And let's just look at this open SSL command for a second. So if I were to have a certificate, a .cer file or .crt file and a key, but I needed a PFX, I could convert that to a PFX file using OpenSSL. So I could come in here and I could say OpenSSL PKCS12, export it. What cert do I want to use? And cert, .cert, am I in the right folder? No. Let me go one directory deeper. Now it'll make a lot more sense. Open SSL, PKCS12, export, cert, and then I need my key as well. So in key, I'm a terrible typist. There's a key. And then what do I want to send out? I want certs and cert.pfx. And that'll be good enough. I can run that 
and it will probably tell me that I used the wrong thingy. Yeah, I did. PKC, PKCS12. I did use the wrong thing, didn't I? See, I'm doing it live. Yep, that's exactly what I did. And I'm going to have to go all the way back because I don't have my other keyboard. P K C S 12. There we go. And then it's going to prompt me for a password. So I can just put a password in and then I get my certificate. So if I look in my certs folder now, there's my PFX file. That's cool. I did it with a CLI app. With Crescendo, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Better? Better? We've turned, the <laughs> We've turned the lights on. All right, so let's look at what this looks like in Crescendo. So this is the schema file. And you can read the schema and review it here at the, at the link. You can go directly to it and read it in the browser. And there's a link to it on the docs page as well. Um, and then you define what commands you want to be inside of that module, and that's an array. So for this example, I've, got, I've only got one command that I'm defining in here. An original name is the underlying native command that you're going to invoke via this PowerShell module. So I've said, hey, OpenSSL lives in user bin OpenSSL. Execute that when you run this command. And then the verb, typical PowerShell stuff, convert, because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to convert this certificate from one format to another. And then the noun is OpenSSL certificate. Original command elements are portions of the native command that you want to send behind the scenes that aren't part of the parameters. So in the case of OpenSSL, you can say OpenSSL foo, and it does a thing. But foo is a subcommand, so it takes parameters. So in this case, I'm saying run OpenSSL PKCS12, but for all the other stuff that you saw me pass on the command line, like the export and the in and the in key and all those things, make those PowerShell parameters. So that's what this parameters array does. You give it the name of the PowerShell parameter that you want to make it, so export, and then the native name for the CLI tool. So in this case, that's dash export. And then you can have the parameter type as well. Dash ex export is going to be a switch in this case. And then you can mark the mandatory, true, et cetera, et cetera. And you can do other stuff inside of here too. So if I were to open this up, here's the other stuff that you could pass to this as well. So you could make these positional. You could have value by pipeline by property name. You can do all of that stuff here by just defining it inside of the schema. And then we've just done the same thing for all of the rest of them. And this is an oopsie whoopsie. I don't need that at the minute. But that's all I'm doing. I'm just saying, hey, for the native command parameters, this is the PowerShell equivalent. And once you have the schema defined and it looks good, it's the way you want it to, then you can generate your module. So if I come over here, and let's just make this a little bigger so we can see it. You can say export crescendo module, and then you give it a configuration file. And in this case, it's going to be openssl.crescendo.config.json. You name that whatever you want. But I like to say this is a crescendo config file in JSON format. So whatever your module name is, .crescendo.config.json, it's a pretty good uh, nomenclature to use. And then you can give your module a name. So in this case, I'm going to say openssl. And I don't think I have it generated yet. Nope. I don't. So you can say module name, open SSL, and run that. Once you've ran that, and if we just do a quick ls on this directory, you can see we've got a PSD1 and a PSM1. And those are exactly what you would think they are. Um, your PSD1 is your manifest. 
It's automatically wired everything up for you uh, in terms of pointing to, and of course, I need a real mouse. It's got all the stuff in it you, you would expect. Functions to export, it's figured those out for you and put them in here so it's not wildcarding things. So whatever you've defined in that JSON file becomes the functions to export inside of here. And then the PSM1, guess what? It's your functions. Now this is auto-generated, so it is going to look a little weird um, and probably not how you would think to write it, but it's doing all the work for you. So they've done the hard work of figuring a lot of things out so that you don't have to. And they've made it very, very safe in terms of invoking a native command and running those commands. So that's, that's it. Um, JSON schema, export it, you get a module. Now you can come in here and say import module uh, open ssl.psd1 and I'm gonna force it just in case I already have one and let's delete this pfx file. Now I can say convert open SSL certificate. I'm gonna tell it to export and I want to insert the, the .cer file and I need my key which is going to be certs, cert key, and out file in this example, because out file is used on a lot of other PowerShell commandlets, so it made sense to make it an out file parameter here. Uh, I'm going to say certs, cert dot pfx, and then it's gonna prompt you again for that password. Now, I tried to make it do it in the JSON schema, but it didn't like me and I had two hours to figure this out. So you could probably, there is a dash password parameter on this native command that you could pass it in, but it's really, really stupid in that it's not dash password and then the password. It's dash password space pass colon whatever your password is. Why? That's, yeah, I, no earthly idea why but there's my PFX again. So 30 seconds of, of work, well, maybe a few minutes of work to, to generate the schema, but you didn't do, have to do anything else. You wrote some JSON, and then you ran a command to take that JSON and make a module. Can you, find JSON? you can, yeah, you can, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, there is a section for it. Um, and actually, if we go look at the schema somewhere, where did I put the schema? I had it. Actually, let's just do it this way. You can go like this. So if we look at, there's the aliases, there's the commands. Actually, let's just look at it. So you can do the original help here, and then the description, default values, all of that stuff here. Um, and there's a whole section for the help as well. So you can do all that stuff. And then the additional arguments thing that's in here somewhere. Uh, let me see. Additional, additional parameter attributes. You can send things like validate sets and validate scripts and all of that stuff to the command as well. So it's not hidden from you. It's not like this is going to be really basic and I have to do a bunch of work after the fact to do my validation. You can define the validation in the JSON as well and then it'll wire it all up for you. So it's super, super, very, very handholdy. Anybody that writes CI, CD tools or pipelines and things like that, can probably pick this scheme up and run with it and figure it out. Um, it gets really, really powerful as well. Um, I mentioned getting PowerShell objects back. That's where we'll dive into this Vagrant example and take a look at that. Oops, so let me minimize this, go to Vagrant. 
if we look at this vagrant crescendo schema, I've got a couple of commands defined in here. So I've got vagrant installed on this machine. So if I run vagrant, it's gonna say, hey, you gotta tell me what to do. There's the help desk, help desk for that. Um, but I can run vagrant global status, for example, and that will tell me information about the vagrant boxes that are running on this machine or that are currently provisioned on the onto this machine. So I've got an ID, what the, the name of it is, the provider, the state, and the directory where that vagrant file lives. That kind of sucks to work with. So what I've done is I've wrapped this in vagrant and called a command, get vagrant status, that wraps vagrant global status. And I've written an output handler. And this is where the power of this stuff really comes into play. I can take this output and turn it into whatever the hell I want in terms of a PowerShell object. So if we look in this example, I've defined an output handler called parse vagrant status. So if we look at parse vagrant status, all I'm doing is accepting the output of the native command into this lines array and then I'm doing stuff with it. And I know that vagrant global status, when I run it on the command line, it gives me all the stuff I care about and then a space and then this blurb of information that has no earthly being, no, there's no reason for me to have this as part of the output from my PowerShell command line. So I say skip the last seven lines, so just ignore it. And then I loop over each of those lines and I'm doing just a little bit of regex to give me the columns. So I'm grabbing those items and just making my columns. And then I define my PS object with ID, this column, each, each bit is going to be part of my object. So if we were to look at what that looks like when I load it all up, Get rid of this. Let me back out and go into this vagrant example. Export crescendo module vagrant. Let's just call this vagrant. Oh, you know what? Caveat: when you're using output handlers, dot source them into your running session so that this can know about them and pick them up. I didn't do that. So the very first thing we're gonna do is dot source in the parse, uh, parse vagrant status. And we'll go ahead and do the box one as well, because we'll get to that in a second as well. So now when we run this command, I'm gonna force it just to be safe, I get my Good stuff. So if we look at this now, there's my PSD1 and my PSM1, so I'm ready to go. So I can import this module and force it just to be safe. And now if I run git command module vagrant, that crescendo file has a whole bunch of stuff in it. So now when I say git vagrant status, so let's do this side-by-side -side comparison. Let's clear my screen and run vagrant global status. Give me the output and then get vagrant status. Now I get objects backs. So then I can do all that fun stuff where object, you know, you can do where object, uh, Say ID where ID equals six eight three seven A B and it'll only give me that one back. And then you can say convert to JSON. You can get JSON back from it. You can do convert to CSV and you can get a CSV file back from it like 
that's freaking cool for a native cool tool to be able to give you PowerShell objects back and then do other stuff with it. That's super, super powerful. And let's just take one more look at this other, this Vagrant Crescendo JSON file. So there's other ones in here as well. Um, Get vagrant box, for example, that one just lists all the vagrant boxes that are on your machine, uh, and an add vagrant box as well that takes a whole bunch of different parameters depending on where you're pulling it in from. So you can do stuff like get, oops, let's go over here. So let's make this go away a little bigger. So get vagrant box. That gives me those two boxes. And then I can say, maybe I want to remove vagrant box name Ubuntu trusty 64. Removing a vagrant box via the native command on the command line, if you run this command, it's gone. If you do it in PowerShell, though, you can do confirm stuff so that you can't shoot yourself in the foot. So you get what if, you get these prompts, so that if you don't say dash force, it's gonna ask you first. So when you add dash force, you know what you're doing, right? So all that goodness of, <laughs> right? So all that goodness of PowerShell you get for free using Crescendo. Super, super nice, super powerful. You don't have to do a lot to make it work. That's done. So now we can do the same thing again. So if we do um, add vagrant bar, and I already forget what the name of that was. Uh, you can do shorthand, or you can do name, or you can do catalog file path. If you go out to vagrant cloud and search for all their boxes, they give you like, hey, this is the URL you can use to add this. This is the short name that you can use to add this. Just correlate whatever you want to use to the appropriate parameter, and it'll add it. Um, I think it was Ubuntu trusty 64. No, it wasn't. I don't remember what it was. But yeah, it's, it's, that's cool, right? It's so cool that you can take and just write a little bit of JSON, have a native command, and all of a sudden you get a PowerShell module out of it. And this is something that you could put into a build pipeline as a step. So say you've got a build pipeline that produces a C-sharp .NET CLI tool. That's cool, there's your CLI tool, but another step is this JSON file that runs and generates a PowerShell module for you at the same time and then publishes that to an internal NuGet feed. So you've got like a Nexus instance or something like that that you publish internal modules to. So now not only did you empower the teams that need to use the CLI tool, you've empowered the automators in your organizations that use PowerShell to do all the cool stuff so that they have a way to interact with the CLI tool as well. And they didn't have to do some nonsense of like command args or whatever it is equals Oh, do this thingy with this other thing, and then do like one of these nonsense words like native command at command args or whatever it is. You, that just gets messy because then you have to do all the other stuff yourself as well. You have to figure out the error handling, you have to do all the stuff to make that work. Whereas with Crescendo, they kind of did it for you. You define it in the JSON and then you're done. Super, super cool. I started to work, I'll show it off. It's not done. It's buggy as all get out. But you guys probably saw it when I started screen sharing. So if we back out one direct. Yeah, it's in here. So let me go into, you probably saw these two functions, or these two files inside of here. Let me get rid of this. DSLs are cool, right? 
How many of you write pester tests? That's a DSL. How cool would it be to define your module in the same manner? So you say, hey, this is my native command. These are my parameters that I want to pass. That's kind of cool. So but it's buggy. It doesn't work 100%, but it's kind of cool. So you can run generator. And yeah, I broke it. I broke it. I broke it like in the session I was previously. I was like, I forgot to put the native command into the JSON. And I started adding it, and then it just fell apart. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to show it anyways, because whatever. We're all human. We get red text first, and then it works, and then we celebrate, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's coming. I'm going to keep working on it. I'll probably bang it out, and I'll probably post it somewhere on GitHub. So keep an eye out. Heck, it might even end up on Crescendo proper at some point. Lord knows. Who knows? Does anybody have any questions? I talk fast when I'm doing this stuff, so I know I've got 45 minutes to fill up. Yeah, yeah what's up? Um, so you, you mentioned, like, uh, you give it the additional commands mm -hmm. for, like, subcommands. Mm -hmm. Can it do, can you, will it support, like, nested subcommands? You can. Yeah, you. I work with some, some terrible syntax too. Yeah, you have to. You have to get a little bit creative sometimes, but you can leave things out of the the JSON and it will be fine as well. So if we were to look at uh, what's a good one, I think this one actually does have an example of that where it yells at me. Yeah, so ID is is a good one. So I can say stop vagrant machine ID. Because there's no corresponding parameter for that, I don't need to explicitly pass it to the native command. So in this example, it would be like if I were to run vagrant halt, which is what stops a machine. If I'm in the directory where the vagrant file lives, that, that machine will come down. It'll shut it down gracefully. If I'm not, I need to give it the ID of the machine to be able to halt it. That way it can go under the hood and find the one I'm talking about and know where it's at to <laughs> shut it down. But there's no dash ID or dash dash ID for this. So that's why I don't have an original, original name defined here. That way I can, my PowerShell functions can say stop vagrant. Uh, did I give it a box? Did I? Yeah, so stop vagrant machine. So stop vagrant, vagrant, vagrant. Yeah, that makes sense. Vagrant machine ID and then it picks that up and it just passes that to Vagrant Halt without that dash ID thing on it. It just gives it to it. Whereas if I used original name and it was dash ID or dash dash ID or whatever it was, it would say whatever that parameter is and then the value of the PowerShell parameter that I gave it. So you can cheat the JSON a little bit and bend it to your will. At least everything I've tried so far, I've been able to bend the JSON to make it work. And this is relatively new stuff. Like, it's been GA for a little while, but I know they're working on doing a bunch of stuff to it, and it's only going to get better. Um, things like error handling and things like that are only going to get better. Um, being able to filter things within the, the function itself are going to get better. Um, so there are a few warts, I guess you could say. Um, but for the most part, it's just cool as hell because it's so fast to really scaffold something out. Anything else? We got like 10 minutes left, 15 minutes left. It's still dependent on the original name you gave it in the project? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is.
should do. Let's find out. What was this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where is get vagrant status? Yeah, let's do get vagrant status because it's a little friendlier. You don't have to do too much with it. So let's export. No. Am I in the right place? I am not in the right place. Did I not import it correctly? I sure did. <laughs> yep, sure did. Look at that. All right. I think, I don't know. PSD1 force. There we go. Get vagrant status. Yes, it will warn you. I had a feeling it would. That would be silly if it didn't. I've had a lot of fun with this thing. It's super cool. You mentioned there's, um, and I, I know you mentioned that you recommend not using it, but um, you recommend, you mentioned there's a command that'll generate a lot of the JSON for you. Does it do anything? Can you like feed it a command to look at the helper or anything, or anything like that? Not that I know of right now. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 Commands that are available as part of the Crescendo module um, are listed on here. You can use like new example info to give you kind of the stuff, but yeah. 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 Yeah, let's let's take a look at some of these output parsers. <laughs> so let's close this. Um, Vagrant box is a good one. So same kind of thing, and this actually highlights one of the things that is probably going to be fixed in in an upcoming release. So um, I have my object, my array of lines. This is the native command output, and then I have another parameter for name. So I want to filter on the commandlet itself for a specific box. So if we were to run git vagrant box right now, it would give me this. Now I only have one box at the minute, but if I were to say dash name and then give it this name again, and I can't tell if that's highlighted or not. Let's find out. Yeah, it is. If I had more than one box here, it would give me everything. Again, it's not filtering inside of there. So you would still have to do your where object stuff outside of here. Um, I have talked to them about it. I think there's an issue for it even uh, on, on the repo um, to, to take a look at that and see what we can do. Um, but that's something that I, I think would have a lot of value is being able to filter in the in the commandlet itself. Um, it's kind of the same way with you would use like get process or get service. You don't want to say get service, get all the services back, and then say where object, whatever the service name is. You would say get service, Windows Update service, or whatever it is, and just get that one single thing back, or that array of things that you care about back. Um, so we'll fix that. That'll be that'll be good. Um, but yeah, that's there's really not a lot to parsing the output. Um, if you don't like regex, you're gonna hate regex because it's a <laughs> lot of regex <laughs> to figure it out. Um, but it, it can be done. Like this is terrible, but it allows me to really like name the matches so that I can really quickly just say, hey give me this one and this one and this one 
when I'm creating my object. But at the moment, this is something that you have to handle yourself. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of parsing the output, we only know what we uh, we know, right? We don't know what the object is you want to be. Like, you could only care about three of the properties coming back from the native command, or three pieces of information from the native command, and throw the rest of it away. So you would write a parser that parses only the three things you care about into an object. Do you have this on GitHub as an example? Uh, do I have it on Git? It, it will be. Yeah, if I don't have it, it will be. Yeah. It will, it will. Once, once this is loaded into the running session, that's why I dot source these two parser functions into my session, because in my crescendo um, for the output handler stuff, um, I said this function. So once this function was loaded into my running session, this could find it and then bring it into the PSM1. So yes, you, you do have to do a little bit of work there to make sure your parser is available to the JSON when it gets exposed, or when it gets executed. Well, now I'm talking about when you import that module, that vagrant module. Mm -hmm. your help function, is that? Yeah, this comes with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we were to look at this PSM1 file, um, if we scroll, yeah, here it is. So the vagrant status, this is the output handler, and this is the, the function that I wrote for it. So that all gets shipped into the PS. makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Any other questions? I don't think I have any other cool examples of it off the top of my head. Um, let me see. If we back out of this, ooh, don't, don't do that. Don't mess that up. If we back out of this, uh, What else do I have? Yeah, so I stole the Vagrant one out of this folder, but I did one for Cloudflare D, and I did, I work for Chocolatey, of course I'm gonna do one for Choco. Um, so yeah, I've just been having fun playing around, poking it, doing different JSON files and exploring. The Cloudflare D one is really cool, because we use Cloudflare for Teams um, to access a bunch of services and things like that. So a nice powershell power way for me to start my local daemon to like give me the tunnel so that I can access the stuff behind Cloudflare um, was cool. Instead of doing Cloudflare D, all these stupid parameters, I can just throw this into my PowerShell profile so that whenever I want to start my tunnel, I can just type an alias and my tunnel comes up with all the parameters that it needed and then I'm off to the races. I don't have to remember what were what was the syntax for this 
stupid thing so that I can get to our internal build server or whatever. So, yeah, it really speeds you up. Yeah, exactly. It's all just, it's all just right there. Yeah, yeah, it's all just right there. Um, yeah, and the fact that you can like define your help and everything inside of the JSON as well is super, super convenient, super awesome. Uh, come to my docs talk tomorrow, and I'll show you how you can automate that stuff as well, so you don't even have to worry about like your published docs. It just happens as part of your build pipelines as well. Cool. Well, I'm going to finish four minutes early because that's all I got. <laughs> Literally all I got. <laughs>